Good morning, everyone. This is how you get 200 people quiet. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like you first to all rise for the Royal High Royal Highness, Princess Mary Marie of Denmark. Thank you. Your Royal Highness, ministers, distinguished guests, colleagues, and also fellow food waste fighters in the room, and also following us digitally on the screen. I wish you a very welcome to the Nordic Food Waste Forum today. It's the biggest top meeting on the topic of food waste in the Nordic so far. It will be a very intriguing day where we will put the spotlight on the topic of food loss and waste. My name is Åsa Sandberg. I am the project manager for the summit and I also will be the moderator for the day. I work myself with the topic of food waste for six years in Sweden, both within uh, food retails and also in the startup world. And I've dedicated my mission to the fight against food loss and waste. Food waste occurs in every step of the food value chain, and therefore it's very important for us to meet in dialogues such as this, to break the silos and also to find solutions to the issue. So this is the biggest ever Nordic push to reduce food loss and waste. It's gathering representatives from every single sector, politicians, businesses, government officials, food retailers, the industry, restaurants and hotels, to just name a few. And the aim for this meeting is to increase the relations and collaborations in the Nordics to speed up the work around food waste. So make sure you use this day, all of you, to network and extend your network within the Nordics. Speak to someone that you haven't been talking to before and spark the dialogue with people from other countries, share learnings and experience with each other. Now, we have a really packed program for you, so I hope that you have, you know, saved spaces in your brains, that you're ready, energized to get inspired. We would like to invite our first speaker on stage, without further ado, please welcome up on stage Sweden's Minister for Rural Affairs, Peter Kuggen. Thank you. This program. Thank you, Zoom. Your Royal Highness. Good start. Your Royal Highness, Princess Maria of Denmark. Uh, Minister Jensen, ladies and gentlemen, and all fighters against food loss and waste. Good morning and a warm welcome to Sweden, to Stockholm, and this Nordic Food Waste Summit. It is fantastic to see so many participants here today. It shows that the issue of food waste is pressing and is important. Maybe even more so now in an unstable world with increased food prices, more focus on food security and the climate change. The Nordic countries have a unique collaboration within the Nordic Council, which gives us the opportunity to jointly move towards a more sustainable food system, which also strengthens our global competitiveness. To reduce food waste and loss, is a key element for sustainability and competitiveness in our food production. At this event, the Nordic Food Waste Summit, I hope we can give you some new energy to strengthen the Nordic, to the Nordic cooperation in this area. 
by sharing experiences with each other and by learning from each other's progress, we can increase the pace to reach the global goal of halving food waste by 2030. The Nordic Food uh, Waste Summit is hopefully just the beginning of a strong, increased Nordic cooperation reduce of food waste. I hope you will have many interesting discussions today and the possibility to make lessons and new perspectives home to take new, uh, many lessons and take new perspectives with you home. I look forward to take part in the results of the conference and to discuss with my Nordic colleagues how we can continue and further enhance cooperation in this area. And I will also like to take the opportunity to thank the organizations, uh, organizers, uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers and the Swedish Food Agency who have made this conference possible. And now, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to uh, give the floor and welcome Her uh, Royal Highness uh, Princess Marie of Denmark. The floor is yours. Sorry, there's a bit of water, so I just don't want to put my... Good morning, everyone. I'll try. Your Excellencies, Ministers and Distinguished Guests, it's an honor for me to be here in Stockholm and to open the Nordic Food Waste Summit 2023. Food waste is an issue that is very close to my heart. I've been engaged in the work of reducing food loss and waste in Denmark since uh, 2015. And, um, and being here in Stockholm and seeing all of you really shows that we finally have wind in our cells. It is a great achievement that this topic is raised at the Nordic level and that the Nordic countries are joining forces to take global responsibility of reducing our food waste seriously. I'm happy to be part of this new Nordic movement that we are starting here today. Fighting food loss and waste is important. We need to act now, and I hope that this summit will be the beginning of increased action and cooperation. Globally, 931 million tons of food are wasted annually. Yet, more than 820 million people still go to bed hungry every night. Those are extreme numbers. And not least given the fact of the challenges we face with climate change and increasing hunger. My engagement in fighting food waste comes from my childhood. My parents always valued our food, and food was treated with respect. Everything was used, and new dishes were invented from leftovers. My parents lived during a very different time that we live in today. Their generation, and especially the generation before them, experienced lack of food during the war, which naturally created a certain respect for food. Today, we are lucky to be less confronted with the lack of food in our part of the world, but we are confronted with climate change and the impact of our lifestyle on our planet. We cannot afford to waste our natural resources and to disrupt our ecosystem. My generation is one of the first generations where the majority has grown up with an abundance of food. We consume too much, we produce too much, and we don't value food the way we should. We have a responsibility as leaders, public figures, experts and businesses to really do what we can to take action for future generations. But we also have a responsibility as parents 
I have myself been very keen to include my children to ensure that they learn about food, value food, and are aware of how lucky we are to live in countries where most of us have food on the table. Just as my parents taught me. The children are our future. We need to listen to their calls for climate action because they are afraid. And reducing food loss and waste is a very concrete step that we can take here and now. If we are to reach the sustainable development goal of cutting food waste by 50% before 2030, so like seven years, we need to be very vocal about the transition needed. We need to teach our children about food waste in schools. We need to create the right tools to guide people on how to avoid food waste. We need to talk about it with our friends and colleagues. We need to ensure that everyone is doing their part. And we need you that have joined us today. You are the champions and leaders can, that can be front runners in this very short and fast race. Fighting food waste is not just a climate issue. It is also an economical and ethical issue. Reducing food waste is also about global equity. I have traveled to some of the poorer countries in the world. I've seen how the smallest resource can mean the difference between life and death. That is something that most of us in the Nordic countries find difficult to understand. But we need to do our best to reduce our impacts on the environment and really value the resources that we are sharing with the less fortunate. And if we are serious about the Sustainable Development Goals and the Nordic vision of becoming the most sustainable region in the world, we need to transform our food systems to become sustainable and produce healthy, healthy food for all. We need to change our consumption we need to adjust our production systems, and we need to reconnect with our food and where and how it is produced. As the invasion of Ukraine is still ongoing with the devastating effects that it has had, resilience is becoming an even more important topic in the Nordic countries. To stop food waste and learn how to use all the food that we have available are crucial and I say all that, but I'm not perfect. We, none of us are. We all waste food. But we really need to do our best to minimize our waste and value what we have. I really hope that this summit will inspire all of you to take action in your respective countries. We all have a role to play, and we all need to act on different levels, and it needs to happen now. Thank you. A warm thank you to Her Royal Highness and for all the work done shedding a light of the importance of lowering our food, food loss and waste. We do need to reconnect and we do need to gain back the respect for food and we can all do something. So thank you. Our next speaker also comes from our neighboring country. And I would like to welcome up on stage Denmark's Minister of Food, Agriculture and Fisheries, Jacob Jensen. The floor is yours. Your Royal Highness, Minister Kulgren, ladies and gentlemen, it is my greatest pleasure to be here and attend the first Nordic Food Waste Summit. I have recently passed my first 100 days as Minister of Food, Agriculture and Fishery in Denmark. What a great journey it has been so far. 
It has been a big revelation for me to meet both voluntary forces and businesses working tirelessly against food waste. I've learned that reduction or reducing food losses and waste is a great opportunity for more than one level. It is a win for our climate, a win for our wallets, and it in the fight against hunger, as well as for business innovation. And we have to see side streams and leftovers in a new light. That is getting the best out of every single resource and making new products and businesses along the way. One man's trash can indeed be another man's treasure. Every year, we throw away 800,000 tons of eatable food in Denmark. That is tons of missed opportunities. Both Denmark and all our fellow Nordic countries are globally recognized for our innovative food cluster. We have the skills to size missed opportunities of waste food. We can, for example, create vegan egg whites from the water from chickpeas that we normally pour down the drain. Or use the spent grain from beer and whiskey production. It makes for some very tasty flour, crisps, and granola. This makes sense and creates value. However, detecting and exploiting missed opportunities requires cooperation along the entire value chain of food production. This is why we have to work together across the Nordic countries when it comes to reducing food loss and waste. We need to keep sharing experiences and knowledge. And we need to keep feeding innovative minds. In Denmark, many volunteers work passionately to dis distribute surplus food. I have visited some of the redistribution sites and I truly admire their efforts and dedication. As politicians, we need to ensure the best possible conditions and regulatory framework for innovative, for innovatives to flourish and solutions to develop. Rules cannot get in the way. Therefore, we have established a task force with the purpose to look at barriers and obstacles. We need to make it easier for companies to implement reduction initiatives to, do to, 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 to donate surplus food. Building knowledge and data about food loss is also essential. We know that what gets measured gets managed. Data is the foundation for concrete reduction initiatives and changes of behavior. In Denmark, the think tank one third is coordinating the voluntary reduction agreement Denmark against food waste. Some of our leading food businesses has committed themselves to measure their food waste and to report the data. This makes the business aware of their food waste. They can follow the annual development and change their procedures. Based on data and knowledge, we can implement reduction actions with proven effect. So let us keep momentum and work together to ensure more sustainable production and consumption. And let us keep repeating that reduction and reducing food loss and waste is a multiple win opportunity. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Minister Jensen, to share these words with us today. It is really about sharing experience and knowledge, just like what we're doing today. And like Her Royal Highness Princess Marie was mentioning, this is the start of a movement today. It is very thrilling and very exciting. 
We will now enjoy a video greeting from Karin, Karen Elemann, Secretary General for the Nordic Council of Ministers, who are one of the main organizers and hosts for this summit. Please enjoy. So I think it's pretty obvious we can't hear anything. Uh, so can we just stop the video and play it from the beginning, please, and make sure that we have the sound on. Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, it's really a pleasure for me to welcome you to the Nordic Food Waste Summit 2023. Around 3.6 million tons of food is lost or wasted in the Nordic countries each year. Think about that number, 3.6 million tons. It's a major sustainability issue and an economic issue, but it's also an ethical issue. If the global amount of food waste could be represented as its own country, it would actually be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter in the world. So this summit could not have come at a more important time. The Nordic Prime Ministers have agreed on a joint vision. We shall become the most sustainable and integrated region in the world. By 2030, we shall be a green, socially sustainable and competitive region. And today, we are making good on our Prime Minister's vision by bringing you all together to share your experiences, best practices and challenges for joint and increased action continuing from the Nordic Food Waste Summit. The Nordic countries' food production differs in many ways from each other, but for all Nordic countries, it is of key economic importance and we are tirelessly working together towards greater sustainability. But food loss and waste are signs of something has actually gone wrong. Valuable resources are being thrown out instead of becoming food on our plates and in our stomachs. And at the same time, we are also highly interconnected within the global food systems. We export foods to a range of countries, while we ourselves also consume a lot of foods from all over the world. And what we do here, we need to know that it actually affects people globally and vice versa. But food should not be seen as the problem. I mean, food is key for change and the transformation to sustainable food systems that provide healthy foods for all will be a necessity for the global goals and for the Nordic vision. Fighting food loss and waste is not just a sustainability issue. It makes economic sense. It saves food from ending in our bins or being discarded. It increases the competitiveness and outputs for our farmers and for our producers. And it lowers the environmental and climate impact from our food production and consumption. But it also plays a part in increasing our resilience that is now a priority for all Nordic countries, particularly after the invasion of Ukraine. We all engage with our food systems every day, from your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and this uh, late night snack. And honestly, I love to have leftovers in the fridge. And just because something has been served once does not mean that it has gone bad. Remember that. We all have a role to play from those small actions in our everyday lives where we actually trust our taste buds rather than only relying upon the best before label to the concrete policy changes that will be discussed at the summit here today. So I for one look forward to taking part of your discussions and ensure that we take increased Nordic action. Thank you.
Thank you very much for that video greeting. Now, I would uh, like to introduce three people. It's three of the organizers behind this summit to, to pretty much kick this off. So please join me on stage. Jonathan Eng, project leader from the Nordic Council of Ministers, who will be moderating this session. Uh, together with Karin Fritz, project manager for the government mission to reduce food waste from Swedish Food Agency. And Sebastian Jell, director of food safety, Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. Please take the stage, he says here, but you're already here, so that's great. <laughs> take it away. Thank you. Yes, we're so happy to see so many people that have joined us today. We're the people from all the sectors, we are from across all the sectors. And we really believe... Can you hear me now? Yeah. And we really believe that this will be a start for a deepened Nordic collaboration. But what many of you in here don't know is that we actually started yesterday, where we gathered Nordic experts from our ministries, from government agencies across the Nordic countries and our self-governing regions. So with Sebastian and Karin, we want to try now to summarize some of the main points that were discussed yesterday. So Sebastian, let me turn to you first. You've been engaged in the Nordic collaboration around food systems for, for quite many years now. What are your main takeaways from, from the meeting yesterday? Good morning, everyone. I think yesterday was, was great, and it felt like we are really starting again something that we already started 10 years ago with the four, first Nordic food plat platform for food loss and waste. Uh, it's been a quiet for a few years, but I think that yesterday we were all in, a, in good agreement on that we should uh, restart this Nordic platform and start working uh, possibly under the under the leadership of the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, and, uh, and, and, and make, make this a, a continuing theme uh, under the Council, but, but also in all the Nordic countries. And, and we, we plan that we will probably have an annual summit after this where we can reconnect every year and see what progress is being made. And Karin, let me turn to you. You are responsible for the Swedish Government Commission to reduce food loss and waste. And I think for you, this was one of the first engagement with the Nordic Corporation. When you go back to your daily work tomorrow, what do you think, like the discussions yesterday and your new contacts from the summit, how will that be beneficial for your work? Yeah, it, it's really clear that we have common challenges and problems in the countries, and we are quite similar. So we can definitely learn from each other, both when it comes to success and mistakes. And we do not have time to reinvent the wheels again and again. We have to share back practices and learn from each other. But if we, then, if we look a bit closer at the discussions, what were the common themes that were discussed? What are, what are the common challenges that we stand up on in the Nordic countries? Yeah. Yesterday we talked about food redistribution and the challenges about uh, traceability. We talked about a food waste law that is actually in place in Finland right now, and Norway is looking into this too. And all the other of us are following this with great interest. And of course, the definition of food waste. What is food waste? It's difficult and we think different between the countries. Some measure the edible parts and some don't. Uh, so measuring is a big challenge. And it's, it's obvious as long as we do not know what we mean in the different countries, comparing the data is like comparing apples and pears. And that's not fair. So that's three of the main topics we discussed yesterday. Do you maybe want to fill in here, Sebastian? Yes. Uh, well, you, well, you mentioned the, the Finnish food law, and I think that's just one of the good examples that, that we are now trying out. I mean, we have, we have a law now in Finland where it's basically forbidden to throw away food from any kind of food operation if there is somebody willing to, to take that food from the, from the operator. Similarly, there is other things going on in other Nordic countries, and unless we get together, in, in summits like these, uh, we will not know what the other ones are doing. So, so this is really a and, and measurement, just like you said. I mean, we all measure, but, but if we don't measure the same way, we don't get that feeling of competition between the countries in a positive way where we'll try to outdo each other. It feels like you have a quite positive view on this and what we should move forward. But Karin, if you look ahead now, uh, when, when we come back in a year or when we continue discussing on a Nordic level, 
what do you what are your hopes from after this summit? Where do you think we should go? Just like everyone else has said, this is definitely an important first step. It is clear that we all want to meet more often. <laughs> Don't wait seven years again. And that we want to tighten the Nordic cooperation. And I really, really look forward to being a part of this. Ms. Bastian, you sit in the Committee of Senior Officials for Food within the Nordic Collaboration. What do you think we should discuss at the next meeting? How should we, how should we move forward? Well, I think we have all the all the ways forward staked out here already, so I think we just need to get down in, in Copenhagen or wherever we'll meet the next time and, and just uh, lay down a, a, a proper plan for how to, how to go forward. I'm sure that, that there is certainly the political will uh, among the, the ministers and in the Council of Ministers to do this, so, so we just need to formalize all the good uh, plans that we have made yesterday and may, maybe we'll do today as well. Karin, let me ask you one last question. If you could send one comment back then to these meetings that we will have now to discuss this, uh, and if you could be visionize a bit what we should see in the future, what, would you, what do you think we should move forward and what would that be that you would send to the Nordic Council of Ministers? Yeah, it's so totally clear from the discussions yesterday that we want this and we want a joint Nordic action. So that's what I'm expecting me to see if we go one year forward, that we have tightened the co cooperation between the countries. Great. Thank you so much. I really look forward to continuing this work um, and to see all the numbers of ideas that I also think we'll bring forward here today, not just only from our government officials, but also from other actors that we have in the room. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a great summary. And it really, I, it did sound like it was a fruitful discussion, but I also know that it was because I was there. Um, but I really look forward to seeing the actions that comes out of these discussions. And being part of that dialogue yesterday, it, was, it almost gave me the goosebumps, to be honest. When we started planning this conference in September, I think it was, um, well, at least for my point, I, I didn't picture that scene that was happening yesterday when 40 representatives from all of the Nordic countries were sitting together in one room, really digging deep into the topic of food loss and waste. And I, when I summarized that meeting in the end, I honestly, to my heart, have never ever hosted or moderated a session where I had so many people focused for a whole entire day, no one scrolling in their phones, no, everyone was so engaged. So I'm really thrilled to see where it's going to take us. Now, it's time for a real powerhouse. I hope you're ready. Selina Yule is known for her work around promoting the reduction of food waste, and she founded the consumer movement, Stop Wasting Food. She has written a cookbook amongst many other numerous articles on the subject of food loss and waste. Hold on tight, people. Get ready for here she comes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for this introduction. It's working? Good. Your Royal Highness, dear Princess Marie, ministers, ambassadors, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and viewers online, today we are going to have, when my presentation is working, I hope somebody, yeah, no. Today we are going to have a three-course menu. And we're going to have a lot of food for thought, 
So nothing should be wasted. For starters, I'm going to tell a little bit about the why. Why is it important to stop wasting food and what can you gain for it personally? For the main course, I'm going to talk about the 15 years of work of stop wasting food. Now, I cannot squeeze it into 10 minutes. So it's going to be quite intense. And for the dessert, I'm going to talk about the future, the future of the fight against food waste. Where are we going? And where the future is leading. Now, um, when you stop wasting food, ladies and gentlemen, you solve four problems at once. I mean, you don't solve them, but you do help solving those problems because food waste, it is an economical problem. It is a climate problem, it is a resource problem, it is also an ethical problem. Now, you know, many people, they want to co contribute to the fight against climate change, but what can I do personally? Stop wasting food, because you know, the fight against food waste, it is your easiest personal contribution to fight climate change. And you know what? You're going to save, you know, you're going to save time, you're going to save money, you're going to save food, and you're also going to save the planet, so it's a win-win-win situation. This is a situation that the fight against food waste doesn't require you to sacrifice anything. That is why it's so cool, because you don't have to sacrifice anything and you will gain so much. United against food waste for 15 years. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I've been on the road for 15 years, it is a bottom-up civil society initiative. I started it in 2008. And uh, well, honestly, you know, I could never imagine, I could never imagine that today it has become a huge movement, not only nationally, but internationally. It has become an industry in itself. And it also, you know, I could imagine meeting Al Gore and telling him about stop wasting food, my idol. It's, it's amazing. So basically, you know, why is it being so huge? Because everybody can be involved in that. This is a really initiative that can involve people in taking action. Well, just a little bit about an impact. 126,000 followers on social media. I'm not an influencer. I hate influencers. I'm not an influencer. Uh, 200 national and international projects, 254 opinion editorials, 40 books and publications, 200 talks and conferences, two TED Talks as well, 10,000 media exposures and 22 awards and nominations. Basically, I have no life. <laughs> because, you know, um, I was, uh, this morning I was in the bus and I was like, okay, uh, next year I'm going to be 44 years old. So basically, I've been using one third of my life on this. Absolutely no life. <laughs> but I love this because this is so important. Now, I'm going to tell you the news. And this is, you know, you, you really don't tell anybody. Shh, because this is not out yet. This is our latest Gallup survey. Canter Public Gallup. They made a Gallup survey for us and they actually asked the Danes. Uh, and the Danes are actually answered that today, 94% of the Danes think that there's more focus on food waste than 15 years ago. 94%. I mean, this is almost the entire Danish population. This is among our impacts. Many impacts, you know, we work with the FIO, is there here today, the European Commission, European Union, Champions 12.3. I mean, we have really a wide collaboration portfolio. We also work with the governments, and our first minister that invited me to the meeting was Trolls Nung Paulsen, and he was, he's today the defense minister and the economy minister, and almost every minister of the food and agriculture, we met with them, collaborated with them since 2009, and I have the honor and privilege to meet your uh, excellency, Jacob Jensen, in February, looking very much forward to the collaboration. So the Danish government is involved, and it's so good. Now, the retailers, as you might already know, Rema Zusen, which is Rema 1000 and region retailer, they um, have cut all the bulk discount. Buy three, pay for two, they don't have it anymore. They already did that three months uh, after I started the movement. So the news went viral. Uh, everybody else, every other retailer, they were like laughing at them. They're like, what the, what are they doing? Are they crazy? I don't want to make money, but today, today, my friends, they're all copying what the Rema Susan did. Because today, the fight against food waste is becoming an industry. An 
industry like the ugly uh, stuff, for example, ugly vegetables, uh, ugly uh, cucumbers, ugly tomatoes. Back then, they couldn't be sold in the stores because, because they're too ugly. I mean, come on, they taste just the same. The farmers, they use just the same resources and love on the ugly ones than, than the straight ones and the perfect ones. So today, they can be sold in the Danish stores. They are so popular. And the ugly tomato ketchup? It is the ketchup made of ugly tomatoes. I mean, come on, it, it's ketchup. It doesn't matter if tomatoes are ugly or not ugly. Today, the ugliest ones, they're using uh, in the industry to make new products, just like the ugly spring rolls. People love them. They are sold out. And, well, what we also did, one of our projects is, you know, cafes and restaurants, uh, reintroducing the refood label on the 18 members of the cafes and restaurants in Denmark who fight against food waste. We have doggy bags. We also did education for schools. As your Highness already mentioned, children are the tomorrow's future. It's very important to educate them to stop wasting food because they're also teaching their parents to stop wasting food. It's quite interesting. And also the surplus food for uh, food insecure people. We really did a lot of work back then. I mean, we started the movement for the surplus food. We did in Roskilde Festival, where we were saving at 30 tons of food every year. We also did the Christmas food initiative, like the 23rd of December, where all the supermarkets already, you know, they drown in food because everybody already bought the Christmas food. So now we started, you know, redistributed it to homeless people, to food insecure families. And actually, you know, today a lot of other organizations are copying and doing their work, uh, our work that we did, which is great. So it's become a movement in itself. We also had the food, free food platform, which connects, it connects the food insecure people with the charities, at charities with the food um, donors and it's a huge project it's a huge platform national and, and national wide it is supported by the nordic council national and environment prize that i won 10 years ago and it got already oh 345,000 visits since its launch because today the inflation is, is going on still people a lot of food insecure people need food this is the tool that helps them to also stop wasting food but get surplus food we did a lot of events, nationally, in the Nordic level, internationally, feeding a lot of people throughout the Nordic countries. We are mentioned in a lot of reports and a lot of book on food waste as well, and also in the Vatican. Now, that was cool. <laughs> you know, when, when I got the email from the Vatican, I thought it was spam, because no, 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 you, you cannot get mail from the Vatican, but it was for the Vatican, you know, .va. <laughs> So I was invited to speak in the Vatican just before the COVID uh, started in the, in the world. And, and it, it was so awesome. You know, His Holiness, Pope Francis, had the conference. And also I contributed with the book, on, uh, uh, with a chapter in the Pope's book on food waste that was also published. And uh, I also lived in the same house where the Pope was living. So that was so, so cool. You know, he was eating breakfast. I was like, oh, there's the Pope there. I mean, you cannot just say hi to the Pope, but he was still there, so it was like, oh. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, we have an honor and a privilege to collaborate with Your Royal Highness, Princess Maria of Denmark. And Princess Maria and us, we have contributed and participated to a lot of projects and activities. Activities like cooking uh, for children at your home, uh, like uh, the children's uh, education materials for schools, and many, many, many other. And uh, you also you have the we you are the you have the we food store, which is your also uh, one of your pat patronages. Uh, and 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 we did a joint project together. Food with respect. This is the book that Princess and I did together, together with the uh, top chefs in Denmark and food personalities. And regarding the Pope, I would say this is the food waste Bible. <laughs> this is the food waste Bible because it is not only the recipes from all of us, including your Royal Highness children, uh, His Highness uh, Prince Henrik and Princess Athena. Prince and Princess. 
but this is also the book about you know how to store the food, how to cook the food, how to you know portion planning. So it's really I hope one day it could be translated into the Nordic uh, languages. It could be so cool. So 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 just to start to wrap up um, about the media exposure. You know you've seen the TED talks, you've seen all the media. That was crazy because you know BBC was here in Denmark for some couple of years ago and they did a documentary about my work and. It exploded. <laughs> it exploded online. It got viral. It got 30 million views. <laughs> and suddenly, you know, New York Times, CNN, Al Jazeera, Reuters, everybody. And you know what? People were like, it was a love storm because people were like saying, wow, why don't we have a Selena here in Brazil or Greenland or South America? And I was like, ah, I cannot travel. I mean, I'm an introvert. I mean, I like staying home, so Teams is a good thing. But this has really inspired people all over the world, still inspiring. Now, my friends, the future. No, I'm not talking about Elon Musk yet, or Twitter. Um, the future. Can the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, on which I am the ambassador of, 12.3, can they be achieved? Uh, I, I, I would say right now we have a lot of seat, seat backs, uh, setbacks. We had pandemic, COVID, and this is not the last pandemic, my friends. This is going to be the first one because climate change actually contributes to animals migrating to new places, taking the pathogens with them and zoonotic viruses, and people will get be smitten and there will be new pandemics. This is the first pandemic. Um, we have the we have the war criminal Putin, and I hate him. Everybody hates him. Hopefully, uh, he really changed the world and still does it. So um, it is also a major setback. And also we have a climate change. So huge, huge setbacks. But we should not give up because you know what? Fight against food waste. It's not a one size fits all solution. There's not a magic thing that you can do to stop all food loss and waste. No, 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 no. We need to have behavior change. We need to have innovation, technology, legislation, and financing. Show me the money. Wh who's, gonna s who's gonna sponsor all that? So basically this is, you know, all of these things we're gonna talk about at the summit. I'm looking very much forward to be inspired and listening to all of you because this is gonna be so cool. And, 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 and we also need to talk about prevention versus reduction. Now, uh, all my love to Too Good To Go, I really, you know, I helped them starting many years. But you know what? When you buy stuff from apps like Too Good To Go, you doesn't prevent food waste because food is already being overproduced. So basically, you end up with some magic bag and suddenly you maybe throw it away at home because it's too much food. So basically, you take the supermarket's food waste and throw it out in your own home. We need to talk about the prevention. We need to talk about the prevention of food. What could supermarkets do? What could industry do? I know that Matt Hornwood is sitting here. He will be, uh, Matt, you will be really giving us a good presentation. So, the great takeaway for this summit and hopefully for the upcoming summits, because I hope this is just the first summit on this, the very great takeaway, what I would like to see happening what I think this summit needs to work for, or what I think we need to work for in the future. It is making wasting food socially unacceptable. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that we should eat more than we actually do, <laughs> get fed. No, 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 no. I'm talking about making wasting food socially unacceptable as unacceptable as smoking indoors. An entire value chain, from farm to fork. So maybe in 10 years when we meet here again, nobody wastes food. Maybe there will be no summit because it will be socially unacceptable. So this is what we're going to work at. And this is my friend, must be the end of the summit and the beginning of this collaboration. Thank you so much. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Oh. I feel like I blew off my chair. <laughs> I was prepared. Well, there is definitely so much to do, and I agree with you uh, on the socially unacceptable, 
apart. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is, um, you know, you mentioned already a few things, but, mm -hmm. but for the social, um, socially unacceptable part, what do you think is the biggest challenge for us to get there? Well, there, there are more challenges. I, I mean, it's, there's no, not a one magic solution. Not one size fits all solution. You know, I've been working for this for 15 years because, you know, just like the measuring, so, some are measuring food loss, some are measuring food waste, some are measuring site streams, and people go like, whoa, I mean, we need to standardize the whole thing. So this, you know, as the panel said, it's very important to standardize it. It's also important, you know, to make the understanding that all the ugly, all the wonky, all the leftovers, they can be used, just like Carmen Amon said. You know, reuse the food, use leftovers, making it socially unacceptable. I mean, 10 years ago when, when uh, you know, I was at the parties, I was the weird girl who, who was, you know, uh, taking the, food, the leftovers from the table and putting them in the fridge. And people were like, oh, Selena, here again. Uh, but today, like, oh, Selena is here. So no, we are not going to waste food. <laughs> so this is socially unacceptable. I mean, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't point fingers and we shouldn't go around and saying that, you know, you're the bad guy, you're the bad guy, the industry, we are all in this together. We are all food wasters. There's no one who does not waste food. Not even the Pope, I think. Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but still, so socially unacceptable. Well, I can definitely recognize myself and I probably have some friends and colleagues out here that will agree that I am also the one that's taking stuff from the buffets and into my bag and everything. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, so I actually will open up for some questions in the audience as well, because I'm sure that you might have some. We have two runners, I think, with microphone on each side. Perfect. Do we have any questions in the audience for Selina? You cannot be all quiet. There we go, right in the back, and then we have uh, at the front. So uh, maybe Bastian up there, and then we will pass the mic to you there. Yeah, perfect. And you can say your name also and where you're from if you want. Hello, my name is Alba. I'm representing Bruce Food Club, a nonprofit organization that fights food waste in Uppsala, in Sweden. Uh, uh, you talked about um, uh, food stores removing the three per two offer discount i was wondering how or yeah what was the incentive for them and how did it become so popular so that other stores also started doing the same thank you and thank you for the talk it was really good well thank you it's an excellent question well it started you know i started the stop wasting food movement of 31st of july 2008 and three months later i was contacted by rema susan and they heard me on the news, and, and you know, by that time, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I'm, I'm a graphic designer, I'm not even a food person, you know, I was just an ang angry consumer saying, we have to do something to save the world, so I started the movement. Rema Susan, they heard me on the news, and because of, well, me, stop wasting food, they said, it's a very good idea, we need to do something tangible, we cancel all the quality uh, quantity discounts by three pay for two in every shop in entire Denmark. Now, their competitors, they went around like, what is Ray Matusan doing? They're crazy. I mean, I don't want to, they're going to make money. Or, what are they doing? But what happens is we have a lot of single households, a lot of small households in Denmark. One point five uh, million single uh, households. And they don't need all the large, you know, bulk, uh, bulk discounts. So basically, they were very happy. And it's getting very pop popular. It got on the news. It got on Reuters. And, and suddenly, you know, all the other supermarkets, they, it took some years, but they started to say that, hey, consumers demand it. There's a consumer demand that we need to do something to stop wasting food. I mean, not all of them are perfect. Not, not even Rema Susan is perfect, but I mean, they're all starting to do it because there's a demand from us, from people on the ground, from consumers. So today, you know, they cannot just get away with wasting food. This is true. We have one more question, and you will be here for the day as well. Sure, so, yeah, I'm sure. We have one more question, I think, Diori. Did you get the microphone? Yeah. I sure did. Please uh, thank you for the presentation. My name is Charlotte, and I'm the CEO and founder of Total Control. And we build software and actually an inventory management system to yeah. help prevent food waste. Uh, there's a lot of talks about loss. Uh, and by you having been in this field for 15 years. What are kind of your suggestions to make sure that laws and stuff mm. happening in the future now will actually make a huge change? Excellent question. There is a French law on food waste 
and I know because I sit in the European Commission's uh, platform Food Loss and Waste with all my European colleagues, this law is not very much working because the supermarkets, they are forced and fined if they're not giving food to charities. So what they do, they give all the food to charities and the food is drowning. You know, it's, it's like at the charities level, many charities, they don't have money to, to you know, redistribute the food. So they're basically used as, as garbages. This is not good. So if we need to have this law in Denmark, Mr. Jacob Jensen, we need to think about the entire value chain. We need to think about that. We not, not just push the problem onto a new chain instead of, and, it, and it, we need to solve the problem. I mean, if the charities, it's good that they, they take on the food, but then they should have financing or, or you know, resources to redistribute the food. So again, prevention versus reduction. It's very important. I think we really need to touch about this subject. Well, you are full of knowledge, my friend, and I, you're going to be here for the day as well. And I know that we also have some charities in the audience that might be interesting to speak to you. Thank you so much for this presentation, Christina. You're a great Thank inspiration. You. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, for the first time, actually, I'm going to be sitting on these fancy seats. And I'm going to invite up on stage, I'm very excited for this, actually. Um, Rosa Esrolle is the Senior Enterprise Development Officer and team leader for food loss and waste at the Food and Agriculture Organization by the UN, FAO. Rosa, please sit down. And give her a hand. <laughs> it's really lovely to meet you. Um, so we had a little pre-chat just a few days ago, and uh, we just couldn't stop chatting. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so uh, Rosa, you are here a little bit uh, for your work, of course, um, at FEO, but also to take us a little bit on the global perspective of things. Mm -hmm. So I want to start off with the SDGs and SDG 12. Um, how, are we, how, how are we actually doing? What's the state on it? What needs to be done to reach the goal of cutting food waste in half? Is it still achievable by 2030? Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, now, when we talk about food loss and waste, and it's really nice to see the momentum that is taking place around the globe. But the reality is that we're very concerned that we're not going to make it to the 2030 goal if we don't start to look at all the options and to look at where we can actually capitalize on the greatest wins to generate the momentum to make it to a, the achievement of that goal. Um, listening this morning, of course, we need that momentum. Consumer behavior change is very important, and this is something that we have to do. Education, um, all of the different things that we need to continue doing. But that's not going to take us up to that 2030 agenda. That's a part of it. The other aspect that we have to look at is where can we capitalize on all of the different win-wins that are possible? And that's where we look at, start looking at options of what is happening and why. Our linear food systems with that take, make, use, and discard approach are not helping us very well in that regard. So moving and thinking into um, circularity approaches are where we think we can really make a difference in terms of beginning to really shift that momentum. And we heard this morning about the, the wins that can be derived. It, we move to the circular economy, we drive innovation, we generate business, we generate jobs and other opportunities. And then also, we, are going, we have opportunities for reducing, um, eliminating waste for redistribution, but also for generating um, value from the, those products, the byproducts of the food system in terms of upcycling, um, producing food, feed, 
also um, regenerating agricultural systems as well as energy. Also, another dimension of it is the fact that the circular economy also can help us to work toward transforming our agri-food systems. How will that happen? The circular economy helps us to move not only to reduce food loss and waste, but also to actually address other, um, other SDGs. And so, for example, when we reduce food loss and waste, we generate economic, social, and environmental benefits. These actually are co actually contributing to, in particular, we talked about climate change, SDG 13, SDG 12, and then also SDG 2, because these are very important concerns now, the issue of food security. And I think uh, this is the type of approach that can really help us to make those leaps that we need to be moving ahead in terms of getting closer to that meeting at 2030 goal. So in the Nordics, we heard that we are throwing out 3.6 million tons of food each year. What's, what's, how does it look globally? Like, is it the same situation in for example, low-income countries, or, or can you tell, let okay. us in on, let um, us in on the state. In low-income countries, you, we, there is a, well, let's put it back this way. Food loss and waste is a global problem. In the low-income countries, we are looking more at issues pertinent to food losses. That's a, upstream in the supply chain. While in, in the, um, the, the more industrialized countries, the issues are about food waste and the climate change. So when I dif differentiate between food loss and food waste, in fact, um, FAO is responsible for the food loss index where we look at the food that is lost from post-harvest up to, but not including retail. And then food waste is actually, the index is managed by UN Environment, and UN Environment is looking at the waste that takes place from retail up to consumption and it's responsible for the food waste index. According to UNEP, an estimated 17% of food is wasted across the globe in 2019. Now, FAO statistics are quite interesting on the food loss side, which I can share with you what is happening and how the Nordic countries, or Europe in fact, compares to the rest of the what is happening across the globe. Um, FAO's latest statistics show that an estimated 13.2% of food is lost globally in the supply chain. Now, European countries lose about 9.9%, that's below the global average. But African countries go all the way up to 21.4% losses in supply chain. That's where food security is an issue. That's where you have issues related to growing scarcity of land and water resources for food production as well. And then when we look at, uh, for example, in the Asian region, we're talking about 15%, that's still higher. So um, these are some of the issues that are very much of, of you know, concern. Um, in terms of how, what is happening in terms of, you know, there's abundance and scarcity. And so, you know, these are some of the things in terms of trying to find that right solution. Again, here we have also where losses and even waste occur. Opportunities for actually, again, applying this circular economy. One of, uh, just to give you a very quick example of one of the things that FAO is working on now is the production of what happens in, sorry to go back a little bit, but market waste is a big issue in a lot of the developing countries for one reason, that is affordability is one major factor that causes a lot of food that gets into cities not to not be consumed, and that food has to be disposed of. But if we could actually apply the circular economy, 
we could actually generate jobs for people instead of putting that food waste into the landfill. And this is something that has been done to generate feed and to actually use that feed for aquaculture production that could also, in the end, generate uh, protein requirements used to for people who are in need of nutritious food. So again, I think these are some of the things that as we go along, uh, we have to try to find the solutions that really can generate those win-wins and, uh, and work with them. When we had the chat, my, my former colleague I mentioned to you, Philip Schuler, he was mentioning to me that he did work in Uganda and when he went there to travel there to, to, to help the Ugandan government with their food loss and waste, uh, he, he thought in his head before he went there that it would be techniques or that, you know, that, that, that was the, the coolers at the farm, mm -hmm. that that would be the problem. But it ended up being the infrastructure, uh, that the, the, there was no roads, so the food couldn't get from A to B. I mentioned that to you, and then you actually said, well, it's good to know the cause, the root Absolutely. cause. Absolutely, yes, indeed. And um, what, can you just fill us in, maybe, maybe there is people out here in the audience um, that would like to know, uh, what does FAO, you mentioned a few things here, but what is FAO doing to reduce food loss and waste globally? Like, could you give us some more examples of what you do? Yes, certainly, yes. Um, well, FA, actually, food loss and waste is a very high priority in FAO's current strategic framework that goes from 2022 to 2031. And again, here um, we're looking at working on transforming our food systems to make them more resilient and more sustainable, and so and also more inclusive. So these are very high priorities, and in doing that, um, all of the work that we do to address food waste and loss involves a, a very high focus on sustainability, meeting that triple bottom line of economic, social, and, and environmental benefit. Those are very important areas. Um, so the food loss and waste, of course, it has a very significant role to play in food systems transformation. And so um, all of what we do in, in terms of uh, working with smallholders, stakeholders uh, at different levels of the food system to help them to address the issues. Um, one of the examples we spoke about for, was the um, issue of say, Bangladesh, where we were working with the smallholders. Um, what they do, we were working with them to help them to reduce losses in the tomato supply chains. And we did, first of all, prime, our first activity and action was to identify the hotspots where in the food supply chain these losses occur and how much, and then to come up with the actions that we would take. And what we found a simple solution was helping them to switch their packaging for transportation of that fresh produce from the field uh, to the market. And it was simple as sh shifting from using 50 kilogram sacks for transportation of the tomatoes to the use of plastic crates. By doing so and introducing a few very simple um, steps in terms of washing, cleaning, sorting, we were able to reduce their losses in the supply chain by up to 100%. So the solutions that we're using and need to apply to a large extent, they're very simple solutions. Similarly, we work with the SMEs and, uh, to help them to reduce loss and waste in their operations. Sometimes you, it's a question of having a moisture meter, a simple thermometer, simple technologies that make a tremendous difference in terms of uh, reducing the loss and waste. Thank you for this. Um, I want to also open up for the audience to, to ask you a few questions. It's not that often that we get uh, the opportunity to ask FEO some questions. Uh, so uh, do we have a microphone, Matt? We'll have a question here. Hi, Ro Hi, Rosa. Thanks um, for all that information. Yeah, my name is Matt Homewood. I work at the Norwegian food waste company, Throw No More. 
I just want to dive in the detail about SDG 12.3. And so if you look at the definition, um, you split it into two. As you've said, food waste is under the United Environmental Programme. We've got 50% reduction goal by 2030. Great. We've got a goal to work towards. But the FAO's responsibility, food loss, there's actually very kind of non-quantitative goals. So technically, actually, a 1% reduction would be a success under this definition. Do you not see that being extremely problematic? 1% um, reduction, we have already realized the 1%, because in 2019, we were at 14%. And now, in 2022, we're actually down to it's about, so we estimate 13, 13.3. Um, but at the Food System Summit, FAO did actually establish 25% uh, uh, baseline. So this is something that has been uh, agreed since then, since the 2021 Food System Summit. Um, it's something that we have to continue working toward. So, you know, these are some of the targets that have actually been set. Awesome. Great to know. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, I'll ask a question more then. That's, that's great. One more for me. So, um, I want to ask you, obviously we're now in the Nordics. How do you see... Um, how the Nordic countries can, you know, collaborate even more. What what can what can we do to reduce food loss and waste? Do you have any ideas on, you know, we are meeting up here right now, but um, what role can we play in developing countries? Is it no? I'm, I'm, in, I'm no. I just in general. Yes, in, in general, general. Exactly. In general, I think. Um, this region has a lot of very, very good examples. And uh, I believe that they, in my view, I always look for what's happening, what's working, and then what works, how to scale them up, scale up those actions that can make a difference. Because that's where you begin to capitalize on the wins. And um, I, I think that um, we look at, more, at Europe, as a model um, in a number of different respects, the stakeholder engagement, because that involves um, working together, sharing information. These are some of the types of things as uh, we do, as also as FAO, with, through platforms, through um, convening different groups, because what is happening here today is a really good example of um, helping to identify some of those uh, key core issues, and so um, these are really, really the types of things that really can be done, and, and you know, to make a difference in terms of moving forward. So um, you mentioned in my initial question about the SDGs, and you also mentioned on our call uh, the need of quick wins. That that is mm -hmm. also what we need to do right now. We only are seven years from 2030. Uh, wh where do you see like where we need to run the fastest? Because I guess we both need to have long-term goals, but we now also need to really like sh sh shape up and do quick wins as well. Where what do you where do you see we need to go first? Um, I think uh, we have to do some things. In, we have to do things in parallel because uh, I think uh, consumer behavior change is so vitally important uh, if we have to address the issues. But then again, we, when you look at uh, how our food, food systems now are, are failing us, we always talk about a broken food system. This is where a lot of the change uh, needs to come. And if we go through applying the circular economy, it really helps because it contributes. And it's not only to SDG 12, we're looking at SDG 2, Again, food insecurity is an issue. We have to address it globally now. Um, so that's one issue, the climate change, SDG 13. So it's, um, in my view, these are the things that, you know, we, we really need to start to look at the whole system because this is where we'll be able to actually 
not only we, we're looking at reducing food loss and waste, that's 12, too, and then we also work uh, in the developing countries um, toward uh, the issues related to um, land um, and uh, land with, um, issues, the scarcity of land. We have to work on uh, these types of issues and water resources as well. So it's, you know, taking action, looking at what's happening and then trying to work toward those issues. In, in that process, the approach becomes more holistic and you can bring a lot of different things uh, together. Rosa, I cannot believe that the time has already stopped when we cannot chat anymore. I would like to chat with you all day. But you will be st staying with us for another few hours. So if anyone has a question for Rosa, you can just uh, hug her in the break, pretty much. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to have you here with us sharing what FAO is, uh, is, has going on and for chatting with me. Uh, give her a round. You can sit down, actually, and stay there. <laughs> Perfect. Well, um, we are in uh, Sweden and uh, we are in need of coffee. We know the Swedish coffee. Like I see people, yeah, 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 yeah. coffee, please, coffee. Yeah, 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 it's coming, it's coming. So uh, I have two small little tasks for you before we go for coffee. And then that first one is to first all, again, please rise for Her Royal Highness Princess Marie to leave the auditorium first. So if you all stay put, and we'll leave the princess leave the auditorium first. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. And then, uh, I, I think you should just sit down for two minutes. This is going to be very weird for us to give you the second task when you're all standing. That would be very strange. Um, let's see if we have another slide on the back here. Yes, perfect. Now, many of you might be familiar with Menti. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this, actually, because Menti as a tool is normally used to ask questions, maybe to the speakers. This time we will use it in another way. Um, so we know that there's a lot of experts in this room and you are all working in somewhat uh, with the issue of food loss and waste and you might as well come up with great examples, experience, what you have seen and what you have done. And this we would like to gather. So in this Menti, there will be a question for you. What good examples do you want to share? So in the, in the breaks, also during the lunches, and you can also do it a day, one day after the conference, we will have it open, you share with simple words, what do you want to share with the audience? And we will gather all this and send this out to you after. So you will have a little booklet with great examples from every Nordic country um, to get inspiration from. So, <laughs> pardon. Take a photo of this and use it in the breaks. Maybe collaborate with someone else from another Nordic country who you haven't met before. And now it is time for coffee and see you back here at 10.45.